the faster we get here, the better chance for them to survive. You only have a certain amount of time to get them out of the water. Uh, with hypothermia and other problems setting in, um, they're going to be lifeless really quick. We have to get them out of the water as fast as possible. We train every year, right around this time of year. Every firefighter in the city will either go through this live or at least go through it with our um, training manual and be prepared. Almost every engine in the city is next to some body of water. So really, this affects every firefighter. You by yourself? If anybody falls through the ice, uh, we come out here and uh, rescue them off the ice shelf. Um, it's important in this area mostly because of the, how often the ice has issues. Um, in this area with the climate changing, sometimes it's warmer, then it gets refreezes. It's very dangerous. Uh, so this happens a couple times per year. Um, so we have to be prepared for that all the time. Help! I'm coming. If this ice starts to crack, we'll spread our weight out and crawl. We'll stay on the ice shelf on the ice longer. And we go around the victim. The reason why we go around the victim is that victim is on the ice shelf hanging on. If we go right towards them, the ice shelf will break and they'll go right to the bottom. The only thing that's keeping them alive is their ice shelf. Do an over-exaggerated circle. I don't care how far you go around, you're better off going more around than less. The rescue will come on, clip on the line to shore, now you're attached, and we pull both people in safely. Oh! Oh! Is there any such thing as safe ice? Uh, we can say we'll say no. We'll come right out and say no. Uh, because of the uh, climate change, basically, when you have solid ice, it's going to be basically clear ice. What we have is frazzled ice, which is basically ice then melting, refreezing, then the snows, refreezes and melts. You're never going to get safe, solid ice. If you make that mistake and do go on it, make sure you're not alone. Um, somebody has to call for us. You know, if you're by yourself and you fall through, no one can let us know. Once you're in that hypothermia mode um, and you go under the water, you're not coming back up. The best thing to do is remain calm. Um, you have to stay in the ice shelf and hold on. Uh, believe it or not, sometimes taking your gloves off and putting your bare skin on the ice will help you stick to the ice fat longer because that's your one safety area, that ice shelf. Signal, go, okay. push. Don't splash around. That water's warmer than the ice, obviously. So you start splashing around and the, water's, uh, the ice is going to crack more and more and more, have you fall through. For the past 30 years, uh, we've gone into the schools right before school break. Um, we push this really hard, the kids on school vacations and stuff like that. And with the teachers in the city itself supporting us so much, the word gets spread a real lot. In our city, there's been a few instances where people have fallen through uh, but not gone under. We have not had an ice drowning in over 30 years. And I think it's a combination of not only do we push it, but teachers push it, the administration for the city pushes it, and parents push it. So we're, we're pretty proud of that. With the COVID and everybody stuck inside for so long, they're going to want to get out there. That's the first thing we thought about in our, our department. This year could be a bad year because people want to get out. But it's just, we use the word, it's called risk benefit. Is the, risk, uh, is the benefit worth the risk? And we don't think it is.